something. Ronnie, you're at the helm. On. Up. Good. Um, you know when you go to a foreign country and obviously they can't speak any English, so what do you do? You speak louder and slower. What's the phenomenon with that? They can't speak your language. If you go, where is the bathroom? They're not deaf. They're just not English. So you go, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good week? Good. Well, I, um, is, is the music upbeat today by any chance? It is. Good. Good. Only, I, I, I don't say that not because it should be upbeat, it should be anything God wants, but I say that because um, the Lord, I said, I just felt like reading an upbeat psalm. And I asked the Lord, is it okay if I just, you know, usually I pray about what's on three, but I, I asked them today, which is very different. I said, is it okay if I read an upright psalm? And he said, yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be okay. And then he said, check, just check with the music. So the music is upbeat? What do you know? Good, confirmation. Because if you told me it wasn't, I would have found another psalm real quickly. <laughs> Trust me. So uh, what do you think about the flags? Looks like they were supposed to be there from the very beginning, no? Yeah, well, you know, like I always tell you, timing is everything, right? Read the Bible, timing is everything. Look, guys, um, I don't know how to say this any more bluntly than this, but you cannot do anything right at the wrong time, and you cannot do anything wrong at the right time. Timing is everything with God. You, you can't be out of step with Him. So pray about when you're making decisions, Make sure it's his time and not your time. Because when it's your time, you'll force it, you'll work it, and you'll drive yourself crazy, and you won't see the fruit from it at all. And that's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame to want to do something so good. Good things are good. God things are better. So the timing was right for the flags. We found the company, and as they say in France, voila. And... Um, who knows, maybe there'll be more flags. We, we got the posts. <laughs> ah. So this is, um, this is a really, if, you know, I always play around with titles. God doesn't have titles for these songs. These are songs, Psalms are songs. They're songs, it's a song book. And I call it Israel's hymnal because God gave this hymnal to Israel. No offense to any other hymnal, but this is, you know, this is directly from the mouth of God, this hymnal. Not that the other ones aren't godly or God breathed or God inspired, but this is special. And so this psalm, I would, I would call it creation's choir. Because when you read it, it's like row upon row upon row, tier upon tier upon tier. And the universe is the choir loft. Isn't that cool? And even animate and inanimate creation are praising God, which is really neat. I mean, um, you know, they've done a lot of studies on, on the universe. It's just, it's just uncanny that a scientific mind, an intelligent mind, could think that it was haphazard. I mean, for perfection to come out of an explosion? It, I mean, e even the Earth had to be a, an, an exact distance you know, 93 million miles away from the sun, if it was any closer, it would burn up, just a little closer. Any further away, we'd freeze to death. The, the moon had to be 239,000 miles away from the earth. If it was a little closer, the waters would overcome us, the tides. I mean, even, even its axial tilt, the earth had to be 23 degrees on its axial tilt. To its orbitable plane. I mean, not 22 and a half. It had to be exact. You know, and God just just did this with His voice. You know, Andromeda, Milky Way. Somebody just walked in and go, "He's giving out Milky Ways." I had no breakfast. <laughs> cool. Um, I, you don't have to study it long. You know, you don't you don't have to be an astronomer. Just a little study should bring you to your knees. Really. 
So it's a great psalm. Let's, uh, let's hit it. I know it's a little... Uh, something, about, something about drizzle doesn't bring people out. Ex I've been here 18 years. Can you explain to me the phenomenon in the South? I'm still learning about Southern culture. You will have churches half full when it's drizzling, but people will sit in a football stand if there's a tornado warning. And there's nobody, I don't care how Southern you are, you can't refute facts. So I want an explanation for that. I've been looking for one for 18 years. That's what it is. That's what it is. God is important. He's just not all important. We have all these other things that are so much more important than God. Which, nothing, and no one, nothing, nothing, not your work, not your family, not your hobbies, not your desires, not your dreams, nothing should even come close to vie for your love for God. Your love for God should be so over the top. I don't know if you remember your first boyfriend or your first girlfriend, but that kind of puppy love, that kind of infatuation, and you thought about them 24-7, I'm still infatuated with God. From the time I met him 31 years ago, I'm not boasting, I'm just saying I think about him all the time. Because that's what you do when you love somebody. You think about him all the time. And you'll do anything you can to spend time with the ones you love. It's golden. It's like your favorite thing to do. It's, it's not a sacrifice of praise. Well, I don't even get that. I get it, but I don't get it. Sacrifice. A sacrifice? What am I giving up? It's a joy. It's a delight. Shabbat's a delight. God sets aside time. He clears the schedule and says, come on, I want to take you on a 24-hour pleasure cruise just with me. He's delighted. It's a delight. I just think we should be just as delighted. I think you should be excited to be here. I think you should be excited to be with other like-minded believers. I don't think there's a better place to be on a Saturday in Macon except for Beth Yeshua. <laughs> except during college football season. No, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, let's hit it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. That's how it starts and that's how it ends and everything in between. It says, praise Adonai from the heavens. And that's an exclamation point. Praise Adonai from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him all His angels. Praise Him all His armies. It says, praise Him sun and moon. I'm reading from 148. I mean, guys, the angelic host, the stellar heavens, even the clouds are singing out. What do they know that we don't? They must know something. They must have some concept of how great this God is that made them. See, they're not smart enough to lean on their own understanding. That's the thing. They don't develop their own plans or their own desires. Nope. It says, praise Him highest heaven. That's even in the third heavens where the living creatures are and the 24 elders and the waters above the heavens, even the clouds. Let them praise the name of Adonai, his reputation. You know this by being here. His Shem, his renown, his fame. For he commanded and they were created. They get the fact that he made them. We forget. We build stuff, we make stuff, we have careers, we write songs, whatever. And you know, some people become legends not in their own time, in their own minds. We're impressed by what we do. 
I didn't put the flags up there so you could be impressed by what we do. I put the flags up there as a testimony to what God has done. We didn't have the ability. Bernadette and I didn't have the ability. Most guys in the pulpit, if they weren't in the pulpit, they'd be CEOs. I'd be on the unemployment line. I couldn't really hold down a job all that well because I didn't like the idea of work. Some people love to work. They retire and they work hard in their retirement. Then they work when they were retired. To me, work is a dirty fool at a word. So thank God I found something that is not work. He established them forever and ever. That's inanimate creation. And he has given them a law. Isn't that funny? Clouds are more lower abiding than we are. Clouds are more lower abiding than we are. To which they must conform. He's given us a law, but we don't have to conform to it. They are totally obedient. Then he says, praise not only from the earth. Okay, now he brings it down. Sea monsters and watery depths. Fire and hail, snow, even today, mist, the rain. Yeah, they're commanded. That rain is commanded today. It was set in stone. I don't know who people think Mother Nature is, but I've never met her. It's a created forest. There's no Mother Nature. Psalm 148 tells us there's Father God. Mountains and every hill. Mountains? Mountains are lifting their head to the Lord? Everest, people are so impressed with Everest and people that climb Everest. What's so impressive about that? I'm more impressed with the one who made Everest. People go to the Grand Canyon. I went there, I took my son, and people stand there going, wow, she's awesome, she. I don't even know, how they know the gender? Especially today, anyway. <laughs> She's amazing. When I was there, I could, see, I could see the canyon looking at the people going, you're amazing. I can't heal nobody. You're amazing. Fruit trees and all cedars. Trees are lifting their branches in praise and we're sitting on our hands. I had a tough week people tell me. I had a tough week. I understand. I understand. It's tough. Try running the universe. Wild animals and all livestock. Creeping reptiles. Flying birds. Kings of the earth. Kings aren't excluded. Kings, princes, all government officials, common people. They're all told, tilt your head back and drop your jaw. Stand in awe. Fall on your knees. Give God His due. Young men, Women, old men, children, everyone. Let them praise the name of Adonai, for his name alone is exalted. I was driving down to a meeting yesterday, and on one of the Christian radio stations, they said, it's so hard to find your purpose. Everybody's looking for their purpose. So many Christians are figuring out what their purpose is. I'm like, I tried to call and I couldn't get through. I said, God, let me get through. Your purpose, your purpose, you were born to bring God glory, period. That's your purpose. And you should look to do that, madam, in everything you do. No matter what. 
Stop getting so involved in everybody else's life. Has it served you well? Or has it created more pain and confusion and frustration and robbed you of joy that God desperately wants you to have? You're robbing your own joy. That's crazy. His glory, there it is. I, you know, I should have finished reading it. I'm sorry. I went off on a tangent, but that shows me that when you read the word of God a lot, it, it just, it flows. I said, let them praise the name of Adonai for his name alone is exalted. Semicolon, his glory is above both earth and heaven. His glory, it's always about his glory. He has increased the power of his people. Granted praise to all his faithful. That's like our job. You know what your job is? To praise the Lord. That's your job. I mean, if you can't praise the Lord, how is the lost going to ever get the chance to praise the Lord? If you can, his own. If my children don't think their dad's special, I did something radically wrong. Well, they're just too stupid to see the obvious. But I mean, you know, my kids think I'm special. I, I call them on Shabbat. I talk to them during the week. Sometimes Jerry will just be walking home from a workout or something. Hey, Dad, what's up? Shana, we laugh together. Max, we mess around. My kids think I'm special. I think they're special. And I'm full of faults. Don't you feel like when you introduce yourself, you say, hey, how you doing? I'm Greg Hirschberg. I'm my biggest problem. How much more? How much more? You know, the answer is you can't quantify it. Infinitely more. Thanking God, praising God. Just for the opportunity today to be here. They're persecuting believers again in China. They're bringing them into basements. They're trying to kill themselves by banging their heads against the wall. That's how bad the persecution is. That hasn't happened for you, sweet pea. Get off it. What an opportunity is to be here and just lift the Lord high without wanting anything in return. You didn't come here to get anything, did you? We're not giving anything out. I didn't come here to get anything. It's Shabbat, I just came because this is what we do. God says, have a holy convocation and praise my holy name, and that's why I'm here. But I know, I know how God operates. It's never a one-way street. With human beings, sometimes it's a one-way street. There are takers, takers, takers. They take, they pull, they want. With God, it's never unilateral. It's always mutually beneficial. The Bible, it says so in one of the greatest Psalms ever, that he sits enthroned on the praises of his people. And then it says, but he inhabits the praises. Can you imagine? So you're lifting God up thinking you're doing this great thing, and he's housing you with his spirit. Who's doing better? He has increased the power of his people which means that we have an opportunity today to be empowered. We have an opportunity to get an injection of God's spirit, which we all desperately need. He's granted praise to all his faithful. You are his faithful. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Don't tell him about your problems. Tell him about his glory and your problems might just fade. To the descendants of Israel, you can't get away from it, guys. You can't get away from Israel. Matthew 23, 37, 39. It's talking here, the second advent, the children of Israel are in the front row. 
Yeah. Creation's choir, they're in the front row. They're going to be the head, not the tail. They've been kicked around, knocked around, persecuted since the days of Egypt. But this says there are people close to him. Don't mess with his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I, uh, I, love, I love you and I love your word. Um, I love how there's a vast contrast with you. How everything is, is, is black and white. I really love that because I'm so simple that I don't need too many choices. I like to have two choices. I like going to weddings where they say, well, you like the steak or the fish? I like two choices. I don't like big menus. They're confusing and they're time consuming and they're frustrating to me. Lord, I love how you have heaven or hell. I love how you have light and darkness. How you have the rock or the sand, the narrow road or the wide road, the sheeps and the goats, the Christ and the antichrist. I love it. Two choices. And I know we're going through stuff. I can feel the pressure of the enemy, but we've got breath. So what are we going to do, man? Are we going to die? Are we going to use our breath to curse people and curse ourselves? Are we going to use our breath just to complain about everything that's wrong? Man, I don't want to be around that. It's debilitating. It's bad enough having to deal with it. I don't want to hear it recanted over and over again, especially out of the mouths of supposedly your children. So I'm going to use my breath to live. Because no one knows, right? when you'll take your last breath. I can only hope and pray that on my last breath, I'll be praising your name. Be blessed, Father. I know you love coming here. This is your house. Have your way. Always in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.